Hello, what is up guys? Evil Duos Arm here today, back with another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at my Netrunner slash Quick Hacker build here in Cyberpunk 2077, and give you some build advice, tips, and strategies for playing as a Quick Hacker in Cyberpunk. Now, full disclosure, I'm only about halfway through the main story on this character, but I've had absolutely zero issues whatsoever dealing with any of the content the game has thrown towards me so far. In fact, I might say it's almost too easy to play right now. But anyway, in this video, I plan to show you how the cyberdeck system works, where to find better cyberdecks, how to craft better quick hacks, where to find quick hacks. We'll go through my character build up until this point, show you where I distributed my points in the quick hacking and breach protocol systems and why I chose these skills and which ones you could probably pass on that I kind of made mistakes with. We'll show you how to play the different mini games associated with quick hacking. And there's probably some other stuff that'll come up in the video that I'm forgetting. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it and let's like show you how quick hacking works in general if you are new to the game and haven't really experienced this yet or are wondering how you want to do it. So on the PC version of the game, if you open up your little site finder here by pressing the tab key on the keyboard, you get a whole bunch of options available to you on the left over here. These options are based on your current cyber deck that you have situated. So we'll go through setting this up here in a second. Basically all you do is select whichever spell you want to cast here, and spell is pretty much the best word to use for this, on your different targets. So for example right here I'm going to use Contagion. And that's going to spread back and forth between those guys and they're gone. I didn't even have to fire a single bullet. All right, so that was the basic form of quick hacking, and now let's do something a little bit more advanced to show you some of the other types of things we can do. We have a little random event right here where we have to kill some enemies to complete a mission. First things first is that you can actually zoom in this little sight finder, so it makes it a little bit easier to find your targets. Whenever you go to quick hack, you're going to want to use the ability breach protocol at the start of whatever you're trying to quick hack here. So selecting breach protocol is going to open up the breach mini game right here. This mini game is really confusing at first. I will try to make it as simple as possible. Basically, the numbers you see on the right need to be pressed in this order sometime within this number of moves. So in this case, I have eight tries here. So I can do any combination of eight to get these three in a row, which means I can click any eight numbers in here to get to this three. This buffer number is determined by the cyber deck that you have on your character. So a cyber deck with a bigger buffer gives you more time or more opportunity to complete this chain. If there are multiple chains listed on this, you can complete all of the chains as long as you have a buffer size that's big enough to allow for it. So that's pretty much it for the setup. Now how the actual mini game works. Basically, you take turns alternating vertically and horizontally. So your first move will always be to pick which vertical row you're going to select to start with. You do not necessarily need to start with the first number that's listed right here because once again, as long as you complete this chain of three or four or however many it is, before your buffer runs out, you are good to go. This one's actually a really good example of this because as you can see, there's no way to go to 1C to 1C to 55. Because if I start at 1C here and go down this row, I get 1C, 1C, but there is no... 55 anywhere in this row. Same for this one, 1C, 1C, but I do not get a 55 going across. Now there will be multiple combinations and ways to complete whatever codes you see over here, and once again you can complete everything that's listed there based on the board. For this one I'm going to show you here. So if we pick E9, it selects my row, then I have to choose down this column to a 1C, over to the right for a 1C, and then back up for any one of these 55s. So once again you start by moving down, across, up or down, across, so you will alternating back and forth between these. After you've done that, you can exit the interface and then immediately hit the button to open up the system again. Now, based on my perk distribution, I have an effect going on right now that is breaching all of them and reducing all of their resistances. After that's gone through, I now have reduced costs for all of these different abilities, and the one I'm going to choose again is Contagion because I absolutely love this ability and I kind of use it way too much and it's kind of busted. But anyway, when I pop this one, it's going to instant cast and spread to all of the enemies in the area, eliminating the entire group. Now, yeah, I'm a little overleveled for this area, but it works in just about every area right now, and if it doesn't kill him in one tap, you can cast other abilities, as you'll see in later clips that I'm going to show off. Now, conveniently, at the same location where I just shot this last scene, there is this item right here, or this icon right here. So while you're out playing in the world of Cyberpunk, you are going to want to look for this icon on random objects out there in the world. This icon means you can jack into this item, and as a Netrunner, you can hack the system here and pick up a bunch of resources that you need to upgrade your mods. So we'll go ahead and show you this system again. It is under the Breach Protocol system, so this is another one of the Breach minigames, which once again is based on your buffer ability that you have for your character. This is what I was talking about when I said you can complete multiple lines in one go. So you have unlimited time in this planning stage, and you can actually plan your entire sequence before you start clicking the buttons. You don't need to start clicking. You get infinite time right now, and then once you start, you only have 40 seconds to finish. With that being said, I'm now going to try and plan my moves. So usually it is easier to start on the bottom one here because this will usually be the most difficult one, but this one's actually really easy to finish with the second one. The reason being because once again you select your first option. This first option does not need to be the first one of any of these chains, but it happens to work out really nicely for this one. But anyway, to show you the chain and how it works once again, if I'm going to select 1C in this column right here, it will force me to select something in this column. 
e9. This will complete the second option here. Then I can go left or right from e9, which gives me bd, which is the first number of the next chain. Then I need 1c, either up or down from that bd. There'll be 1c right there. And then I can go left, right from 1c, and I have either a bd here or a bd here to complete both of the chains. So just to show you that logic broken down once again, 1c, e9, bd, 1c, and then I can pick either one of the bds, so we'll take that one. And that completes both of these options here. For completing these hacks on random items in the environment, you're going to get items that you use to upgrade and improve your mods, aka the cyber hacks that you're going to have slotted into your cyber deck. But anyway, that's a lot of buildup. Let's go ahead and move into talking about the different quick hacks you can have and your cyber deck specifically. So starting with the cyber deck, this is probably going to be the most important part as a netrunner here in Cyberpunk. The cyber deck you have equipped is going to have various buffs and items and effects listed underneath it. So the first stat that you see listed there is 10 base RAM. This is the base RAM, the base mana, basically, if you're playing any other MMO type game that you have. The next stat is the buffer size. The buffer size, as we already explained, is how many tries you get during breach protocol. And then the number that says slots references the total number of mods that you can have equipped, aka quick hacks. Now below that, you're going to see a whole series of text available down there. And that series of text corresponds to which one of the cyber decks you have equipped. So there's a ton of different cyber decks in the game. This is the one I'm currently using. I actually found this at a vendor. I do want to point out that the vendor inventory is going to be entirely random because I loaded an earlier save to show you like, hey, look, you can buy this from this vendor and they didn't have it. So the vendor inventory is determined based on when you go ahead and talk to them, which is interesting. At any rate, the key effects you're going to be looking for are going to be reducing the cost of RAM for different items, improving your RAM recovery rate, reducing the cooldown of your quick hats, extending the duration of your quick hacks, or improving their overall damage. So the majority of the highest damaging quick hacks in this game are damage over times that you saw in like the contagion or the overheat spell. So flat damage is great and increasing the duration of their damage over time is useful. Likewise, increasing the duration of them helps a whole bunch of the other quick hacks you can use as well. So once again, that's a lot of words. Let's go ahead and show you this. The NPC you're looking for are the Ripper Docs. So the Ripper Docs are the little plier scissor looking icon here. So if you want to go ahead and check all the different Ripper Docs in the area before you make your purchase, I would highly recommend it. Try and find one that has a really, really good one for you. Now, when you interact with the vendor and click on the operating system option in the top right corner, you'll see all of the cyber decks available to you for purchase. As you can see, there's different cyber decks, all with different requirements to use them and different costs. Pick whichever makes the most sense for you based on the information I've given you so far. Now, the next NPC you need to visit is going to be the Netrunner NPC, and you're only ever going to have to visit this NPC one time because you just need to get your base set of quick hacks before you go ahead and craft better ones using the base versions. Now, when you interact with the NPC to go ahead and see their store, you're going to want to pick up a bunch of these, pretty much all of them, just so you have any of them available to you whenever you need them. But just some of the more OP ones. Contagion is awesome. It spreads to other enemies, and through modifying in your skills and perks, as we're going to do here in a second, you can basically make it spread to every single person out there, like you've seen me do a couple times already. Overheat is a really, really good single target damage over time. You can use it on boss enemies, literally anything to get a big burst of damage over time against someone. Ping is a very useful quick hack, and I keep it on my character at all times. It lets you see everything around a certain target. Short Circuit is a very good, very fast to cast ability that does a very solid amount of damage on an enemy. And that basically summarizes the ones you're going to want to get early on in a Netrunner build here. Other ones are pretty situational for stealth players that want to hide or get around enemies or blind enemies and things like that. If you're just looking to let this carry you the whole way and do all the damage for you, those are the ones you're going to want to pick up. Now, after you have those quick hacks, you're going to be able to upgrade them to the higher tiers. So you don't need to keep checking the inventories of these different NPCs to try and find better ones or to loot or grind. Once you level up your intelligence path enough, you'll be able to craft all of these. So I have all of them available to me right here. So I have enough resources gathered to go ahead and upgrade overheat right now. And that is what I'm going to do. Once you've equipped a quick hack over here, if you click your middle mouse button, it will de-equip it or unequip it, and you'll be able to modify it. And then we can go into the crafting tab and do the crafting on it. So if we select the quick hack tab over here and we go ahead and find the overheat mod, all you got to do is click the craft button. It's really, really simple. Now, unfortunately, to bump it up to the legendary tier, I need to go and get more of those axis points hacked, which will provide me with these upgrade materials. So that little breach thing that we showed you earlier where I went to that antenna to get those, that is where you get these items. To go ahead and equip the different quick hacks to your cyber deck, all you got to do is click the item in this menu right here. And I actually have a better short circuit, so I'm going to take the short circuit off and put the better one on. Once again, that is the cyber deck icon in the bottom right corner of your inventory panel. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the build that I have running right now. You can see I'm only level 21. I maxed out intelligence. This tree is absolutely busted when you really get it going. So there are two options in the intelligence tree. The first is breach protocol. The second is quick hacking. Starting with breach protocol, this is what triggers any time you play that number array game. And there's a couple of skills in here that are really, really useful if you're a net runner trying to kill people a ton with your various quick hacks. 
First two you want to pick up are going to be Total Recall as well as Totaler Recall. This reduces the cost of any subsequent quick hack that you cast by one after you play through that stupid little mini game. Really, really useful for being able to spam your quick hacks. The next chain of ones you need to pick are these three across the top right here. So we have Mass Vulnerability followed by Resistances and Quick Hacks. Get this one first followed by these two. Basically 30% defense debuff, 30% damage increase with all of your quick hacks after you've done that stupid Breach Protocol game at the start. In the first clip I showed you, that was that thing that spread to everyone immediately after the hacking thing. Final one that I have selected here that's actually worth picking up is Head Start. Automatically completes the first hack for you when you use that, which is why that top line was always green in the first clips that I showed you. Moving into the Quick Hacking tab, you're basically just going to take everything in this list, honestly, guys. Everything is super amazing. If I had to prioritize some for you, you get Ram Recovery from these two. It makes it so you can continue spamming spells. 100% worth taking. Damage is increased across the top here with Bloodware as Signal Support. Definitely want to pick those ones up as well. Plague plus the Diffusion ones right here, these two options, this Plague option and Diffusion, make it so that the Contagion spell does insane damage, spreads to tons of people. It's a really, really strong combo. Definitely want to pick those two up. You'll need to pick up all of the crafting ones as you unlock them so that you can progress your quick hacks. That means Hacker Overlord, School of Hard Hacks, Bartmus Legacy, and Hacker's Manual. You will need to take those four skills in order to progress. And finally, Optimization is an awesome one as well, just reducing everything by a flat one cost. Definitely worth it. But generally speaking, everything in this tree is amazing and 100% recommend picking it up. The only exception to this is Critical Error, and the reason I haven't taken this is because it scales on your crit chance, and because I have no points invested in reflexes or any crit boosting items, it literally wouldn't do anything. I have no crit chance. So if you're looking to hybridize in net running in with like a pistol or a rifle build or something, and you're going to be investing in reflexes, it might be something to pick up, but something you should save for later. Now there is one thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about the cyberware, and that is the frontal cortex mods you can pick up. There's ones that give you increased RAM, there are ones that give you RAM recovery when you kill enemies, which is the one that I currently have selected, and there are ones that give you flat RAM regeneration bonus. So any combination of those will work. Once again, you obtain these from the Ripper docks throughout the world, same place where you obtain these guys. And that's going to do it as far as everything you need to know about being a Netrunner. Now I'm going to show you some more advanced clips to show you the different things you can do and why this becomes so overpowered of a build. Now a good Netrunner or quick hacker whenever they get to a location is going to look for cameras around the area. You can immediately hack into that camera with the camera control daemon from that drop down menu and begin thumbing through all of the different cameras in the area looking for any enemies that you see in the area. So we're just going to go ahead and speed through this for a little bit, but basically all I'm doing is going through the different areas, different camera views, looking for any enemies that I see in the building, putting a little tag on top of them. Whenever I've got it all squared away and think I found every single possible enemy in the area, I can begin to go to work here. So you can cast any one of your quick hacks from a camera, which means I can go ahead and cast overheat on this guy and he's done. He's just going to burn to the damage over time. These two guys are clustered together, so I'm going to use the Contagion ability on them to go ahead and get them all to start uh, passing the Poison ability from each other. I know they're going to die, so I can immediately move on to the next camera. There was a lady out in this parking lot over here. Hit her with an Overheat because Overheat cooldowns up because things are already starting to die. Switch back into this room. I know that there's like two people inside of here, so I can cast Contagion. Let that spread between them. And this room is actually the room with the boss dude inside of it. But anyway, you can see this process. We're just going to continue scrolling through the different uh, quick hacks that I have on here, killing all the people around the area and then I can just walk in at the end after they're all dead. If anyone does survive, you can use any of your other quick hacks on them, short circuits, overheats, anything that's off cooldown, which once again, cooldowns reduce based on your cyber deck that you have slotted at any given time. I'm just going through the different cameras to make sure that everything that I had shot originally with spells here has died before I leave and go on in and claim all of my free loot. So that just goes to show you the OP-ness of this build. I literally didn't even have to go near this area. They never had a chance to even find me. Now this next clip is a small portion from a story mission that shows you what happens if you get ambushed and you'd actually normally need to fight during this little bit here. Um, but anyway, we're going to show you how to do it and how easy it is with quick hacks. Right off the bat, you can use the Breach Protocol ability to reduce all their defenses and everything. I actually didn't have it unlocked at this point in the story uh, when I was playing through it. Anyway, it gives you unlimited time too to figure out the code so you can start to plan your move before you begin it. After that, you can just literally thumb through all of your different things. So Contagion to go ahead and spread to all the enemies in the area. Hit this one with an overheat to do some damage. Hit this one with a short circuit to do a little burst of damage. And then I can immediately cast Synopsis Burnout, which is another ability you'll unlock later. The insta kill something after. And then I just have to wait for my cooldowns to come off when things start to die. So things are starting to die now. I can cast Overheat on you. Come back with another short circuit to finish you off. A Contagion to spread across all of them. And you basically get the idea. I cleared this whole area. They didn't even get a chance to shoot a single bullet back because they were all reeling from the damages that they had suffered. So, yeah, this thing is pretty darn OP, I must say, this build. 
Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this video, though. So I do hope that this helps to give you an idea on how to run a Netrunner here in the game. If it is going to help you to progress here in Cyberpunk, do let me know. And also, if you want to see other guides or different things, once again, let me know in the comments as well. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you at the next YouTube video, the next live stream over on Twitch, or wherever I happen to see you. Peace.